Hey, what's up? This is Andy from Every Time I Die, and you're watching The Sound of War. First time I ever saw The Who, I knew I wanted to play music. They were like the first punk rock band without being a punk rock band. I think that's where like every time I die's like reckless attitude kind of comes from is we never really gave a shit about our like gear or anything like that. It was like, if it breaks, we'll find another way to get it. It's all about the live show. I think the, the one thing that defines every time I die sound is an overdrive pedal. I don't think there's been a time in me and Jordan's guitar playing career where there wasn't an overdrive on an amp. Boss overdrive or like a tube screamer is like the one thing every time I die needs. If you wanna go through my guitar stuff, it's ESP guitars. I have a Viper, I have a Tele, Ernie Ball strings. We usually use the beefy slinkies or the heavy bottoms, depending on the tuning. They stay alive a lot longer. I don't know how to explain that. I used to like using the 11 to 52s. Jordan started using the 10 to 52s. I think just to like save on not having like a million different guitar strings in the thing, I just kind of went with the 10 to 52s. It's now become like our thing. Fishman pickups, if you guys haven't tried these Fluence pickups, I'm not doing it just because I'm an endorsee. They're literally the best pickup I've ever played. They have everything you could want. There's like four different sounds you can get to it from like a single coil to a humbucker to a PAF to like a modern sound all in one. We usually use Sennheiser wireless. We use Mugami cables. And then it's pretty simple. Tuner, my TS9, noise suppressor, a DD3, because it has this one setting that I like. I have a Death by Audio octave playing. It has a really cool feedback to it. For some reason, just because I really like cock rock, I always have like a phaser. The dudes will like laugh at me because it's on. If I wanted to bring my claw and centaur out, I would bring my claw and centaur out, but I'm not going to. My TS9s, that's the most important pedal in my chain. So I plug into a, a 1986 Marshall 800. Like that amp, that Marshall amp I've had, I mean, it's been on every single Every Time I Die recording. I saw Jeff Hanneman use the exact same like EQ I did on my 800 and just always kept it the same. It's never changed. I think I've just changed the volume. The lows are all pulled back. The mids are all pulled back. It sounds perfect for recording. And then you try it live and you just can't hear it. And I always go back to the same setting. I haven't changed my settings in 10 years. I have a PRS Arshan, one of the best high gain amps I've ever played. I did an interview with Marshall when we were over in England and they're like, yeah, so like, what else are you using? I'm like, ah, oh, PRS Arshan. And the guy's like, interesting. And I was like, yeah, it's a great amp. And then good old fashioned Marshall at cabinets. Like me and Jordan could run off just our 800s, a tube streamer and a noise suppressor. And you'd see an every time I die set. We're idiots, like all of us are. That's why we play music, is because we can't, we're not doctors or brain surgeons or like rocket scientists. We have to play a guitar. If you want to survive Warped Tour, you can't have like the three delays that you want. One of them's going to fuck up at some point in time. Dust is going to get in it, rain's going to get in it, it's going to break. So just streamline it down to the stuff you don't give a shit about that you know can sound good and it's built like a tank, and then you go out and you do it. This is Chad from the band Newfound Glory, and you're watching Ernie Ball, The Sound of Warped.